Hey there, welcome back. In our last video, we explored the combination of capacitors in series, right? Today, we're going to dive into the combination of capacitors in parallel. And let me tell you, this concept is super important because in most real-world applications, capacitors in parallel are often preferred over series combinations. Now, while series combinations can be helpful in certain situations, like voltage division or achieving specific voltage ratings, they tend to result in a lower equivalent capacitance. So, let's jump into it. And I promise, it's going to be just as fascinating as last time. All right, let's visualize how a parallel combination of capacitors works. Imagine we have three capacitors labeled C1, C2, and C3. Now, in a parallel setup, these capacitors are connected side by side, all joined together at one point. Now, here's the key difference between parallel and series combinations. In parallel, when we connect these capacitors to a battery, the voltage across each of them is the same. There's no voltage drop between them. This is because all the capacitors share the same connection points, like being on the same level in a way, no matter what. Can you believe this? That means the voltage across C1, C2, and C3 will be exactly the same as the battery's voltage. But hold on, how much charge will each capacitor hold? Well, that's where things get interesting. When the battery pushes charge into this parallel circuit, the charge doesn't distribute evenly between the capacitors. It's actually based on their capacity to store charge. As the positive charge accumulates on the first plate of each capacitor, the same amount of positive charge is pushed back into the battery from the second plate, like a beautiful balance of give and take happening inside the circuit. The charge each capacitor stores depends on its capacitance. Just imagine, one capacitor might hold a lot of charge easily, while another, with lower capacitance, will store less charge. So, here's the thumb rule. In a parallel combination, the voltage is the same across all capacitors, but the charge stored in each capacitor will vary depending on their individual capacitances. Now, how do we calculate the charge stored in each capacitor? Well, it's actually quite simple. The charge on a capacitor is equal to its capacitance multiplied by the voltage across it. So for C1, the charge is C1 times V. For C2, it's C2 times V. And for C3, it's C3 times V. Capacitors with higher capacitance will store more charge, while those with lower capacitance will store less. But how do we find the equivalent capacitance of this parallel combination? The equivalent capacitance is the total amount of charge divided by the total voltage. Since the voltage is the same across all capacitors, we just add up the charges stored in each one. So the total charge in the system is simply the sum of the individual charges, Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. And since voltage is the same across each capacitor, it cancels out when we calculate the equivalent capacitance. What do we get? The equivalent capacitance, CE, is equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3, and so on, if you have more capacitors connected in parallel. This is huge! The equivalent capacitance is the sum of all the individual capacitances. So if we have five capacitors of the same capacitance, say C, the total capacitance will be 5C. In general, for N capacitors of the same capacitance, the equivalent capacitance will be NC. To wrap it up, let's quickly compare this to the series combination we studied in the last video. In a series combination, the voltage divides, but the charge stays the same across each capacitor. The equivalent capacitance is smaller than any of the individual capacitors. In a parallel combination, the voltage stays the same, but the charge divides between the capacitors based on their capacitance. The equivalent capacitance increases as you add more capacitors, making it larger than any individual capacitance in the circuit. So, in short, series. Voltage divides, charge stays the same. Parallel. Charge divides, voltage stays the same. And that's the beauty of how parallel capacitors work. More capacitance, more charge stored, and more flexibility for applications where you need that extra power. Isn't that amazing?